All right, you guys. So we have a fun little challenge we're gonna do. Say hi to Scarlett. Hi, sweetheart. All right, so this room is already complete. Just did the floors, so everything's nice and tidy. What we're gonna be doing this video is we know all of you that are interested in having a homestead or farming or whatever are going to, um, are going to want to know how to clean your house efficiently and very quickly. Well, my mom, this is her channel, obviously. Hi, everybody. Um, how long did you own your own business? I have been cleaning for over 30 years professionally. I have owned my own cleaning business for 25. Um, and so we thought today we would just give you a few tips and tricks on different things that you can do, say, your family calls you and they're like, hey, we want to come over and visit you tomorrow. And you're like, I've been out in the garden and I've been working all week. My house is a mess. You have dogs, you have cats, whatever it is that you have. Kids. And, and chickens and kids. And, you know, you're like, you don't feel like you're going to have time to get that house clean. So we want to give you a few tips and tricks. If it's your family, they're going to understand anyway. They're not going to mind this. They're coming to see you. They're not coming to see your house. But we always have this thing where we want everything to look good, you know. And that's just not how it always is. Well, but it's common courtesy. Mm -hmm. I think it's common courtesy. Yeah, yeah. So I would say if somebody did call, and hopefully it would be the night before, you would at least want to get your dishes done because... Those do take a minute. And if you're like me, my dishwasher gets full and I still have to hand wash stuff. So do that the night before so that you don't have to deal with that on that same day. But we're gonna get these dishes done and then we're gonna set a timer and see what we can get done in 45 minutes and give you some tools for different things that you can use to help you to get things done so they are aesthetically appealing and you're not feeling like you're having to work while company is in your home. So let me get these dishes done and then we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. We got the dishes all cleaned up. So we are just going to walk you around to show you what we have to deal with. And then we're gonna go from there. Um, so Candace already had done this area. So we're still gonna give ourselves the 45 minutes to get through the rest of the house. So I'd say oh, give not yourself, the rest of the house, just just the, this downstairs area, area is what I'm saying, just the main floor. And we're still gonna give ourselves the 45 minutes, see how we do with that. But um, like I said, I wanna show you tips and tricks on how to do that. The first tip and trick is start high, go low. That's your first trick. Okay, because you don't want to be doing your floors and then you look up and you're like, oh dang, I forgot the ceiling fan. Well, then you're gonna to have to dust off that ceiling fan and guess what, then you gotta do your floors over. So let us show you what we're dealing with. Candace already dusted here. Half. So I the first thing of course this. is dusting that and then dealing with the Arcadia door. Having Scarlet, this is, should be a daily chore because she slobbers. I mean, she's a bull mastiff. She just drools. And then, of course, you get the bugs in your tracks. You don't want people seeing that. And then we're going to come over here. We're going to do a quick dust on everything here. And when I was doing my preserving, you can see that I um, did something on my table. I'm going to hit that really quick, show you what I can do there to, to fix that up. I have to do these plants, but you know what? I'm an urban farmer. So it's okay if those are sitting there, it'll be aesthetically appealing. Somebody will, you know, it'll be a conversation starter. So then, you know, you need to get under there and you need to get all of that hair, dust that off real quick. And then we're gonna deal with, with this area. I got the dishes done, but guess what? The counter still needs to be cleaned off. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. I've got peppers out. I've got seeds out that need to be taken care of. I'm not dealing with any of that. I can tell them what they're there for, 
but I'm not going to deal with that because it's not important. I'm trying to make it aesthetically appealing, not perfect. If I was doing a full clean, I would be putting all of that away and then, you know, dealing with all that. But this is basically surface cleaning that we're going to show you today for quick tips and tricks on how to make things look presentable. So then you have your appliances. We'll be dealing with those. I'll show you some tips on, on how to get this cleaned quickly. We'll get this done. And then, um, I don't think we should worry about this. I'll have Candace scan in here, but, um, this, this area here, I would, um, there's, you have your room, right? Your Monica room. And that's, that's my Monica room. And I apologize for it. Anytime anybody comes over, it's my office. It's a disaster. And I, it's not something I have time for in my life to deal with. So I will make it a little more presentable, but it is what it is. And the buffet table we would clean off because that's you know where we walk in and you have that area where you walk in the door and you drop stuff off well that's our buffet table so we'll get all of that cleaned up and then we have a bathroom here and that's where your guests go i mean they come in and this is the bathroom that they have to use so we will you know we usually keep this pretty presentable anyway but we'll do a touch up in here and i'll show you how to quickly uh clean up a toilet and um the surrounding area so we will get adjusted and we'll set that timer and we'll get started every time we stop to change and um still doing, still doing. no it's fine every time we stop and change positions we will stop the timer and then we'll resume it when we start cleaning again so we can keep track of how long this actually takes us here we go okay start all right, so we're gonna start here with this glass window. So remember, not perfect, but we're trying to just, see, she's already here. So by the time my guests come, I would probably have to redo this again real quick. Okay, rag, squeegee. Like now, you're doing your windshield. Don't think that, you know, don't get upset if this doesn't come out perfectly the first time that you use the squeegee. And then just run your rag along the edges and that takes care of any water that was left on it. And with her, you gotta scrub a little bit more because of all the slobber. She knows you're talking about her. She walked away. I, she walked away. When you're first using your squeegee, try doing different angles, different pressure, and you'll find the sweet spot. It took me a while to play with this. I, I actually had fun trying to learn how to kind of move it around. I mean, you watch, watch these window washers and they're going, woo, woo, woo. I'm jealous. <laughs> I still can't do that. Okay, I'm gonna do the outside and we'll see how long this took. Oh! She's waiting to make it dirty again. Or, oh no, that, oh no, she is there, okay. I'm like, wait, that's a reflection. <laughs> if you're in Arizona doing this. You gotta this, do it quick. You gotta be quick and you gotta just go over it and make sure that's wet. Cause your squeegee's not gonna work surface isn't wet. I mean, it can't be a little wet. It's, it's got to be a fair amount. Mm. We'd usually go all the way up. Yeah. 
Yes, if I was doing a regular cleaning, but this I one. would be all the way up. But today, we're just touching things up to make them look aesthetic. Well, especially this window particularly, because that's where the screen is going to be. So you're not going to see the little water spots. Yeah. You can't be OCD <clears throat> when you're trying to just make things presentable. I'm not OCD. What? Okay. We're done with this. So Candace, go see how long that took. Okay. And I'm just going to touch up couple spots that I miss. We are at, it took four minutes. Pause. Okay, Candace, how long did that window take us? Four minutes. Well, three minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, awesome. So now we are going to, remember I said high to low, but half of it's done. That's already done. She already did half of that. All right, so, so let's. All we're going to do is. Hold on, hold on. This is going to be... We gotta start the timer. Ready? All right, this is gonna be your best friend when you are trying to do a quick clean. If you guys don't have one of these, invest in one. They are amazing. They really do pick up a lot of dust and dirt and hair, debris. I use this all the time. Talk so while you clean. It can get into things really quickly where it would take you a lot longer if you were doing it by hand, right? So all we're gonna do is do a quick clean. We're gonna run over this stuff real quick. And don't forget, we didn't do the floors yet, so we're not gonna worry about what we're getting onto the floor. Okay. We're just going to... Got those, got that. And she got all that. Okay, so now, I always have a wet washcloth with me to run over the main area and anything like that, that's done. So now we were here. Remember I told you we were gonna get that track. I'm just going to get these bugs out of this track by flinging out <laughs> this mm -hmm. By flinging this out of here, okay? And then you just check your baseboards real quick. They look all right, nothing detrimental there. And then we're going to pull out our chairs and I have wonderful scarlet, so I have to watch for slobber marks because I'm gonna have my grandson coming over here maybe. And I wouldn't want him having to deal with that. I always want my floors especially clean because he likes playing with all of his toys on the floor. So, you're kind of doing two things at once. You're getting all the dust off, right? And then you're wiping off any spots. And you're just gonna go around the table and you're just gonna pull everything out. You're basically prepping right now. So you're doing three things. You're washing, you are dusting, and you're prepping for your floor work. Because you don't want the stuff to be in your way when you're doing your floors. You don't want your chairs in the way. Okay, now you're gonna come to the table itself. Give it a quick wipe down. Here's those melons I was talking to you about that we wanted to cut into. That's gonna be our snack from when we're done with this. Like I said, I'm okay with leaving these on the table. Sure, I still have to do, but hey, we got company coming, so we gotta make our priorities, right? Now, I told you guys about that little spot right there. Here we go. I'm going to take some old English, and this is for dark wood, and I'm just gonna rub it on here. And I'm just gonna let that sit, and it's gonna work <laughs> while we're doing other things. And the we'll law of making in. things happen. It's gonna work. Gonna work. Okay, so we got that done. Now we have this area right here. We're just gonna run over all this real quick. We're not gonna mold everything. 
behind her, picked up the, the first couple of things. Because like I said, when you're just trying to make things appealing, you're not doing a deep clean. So, let's move that like that. So we're just kind of getting around everything. or kids prints or whatever over all of that. This area is ready for floors. Let's stop the timer. All right, everybody, we are back. We are going to resume our timer. Okay, there we go. Candace is working. She's in the kitchen. And she is going to get half of it done. I'll get what I can get done in 15 minutes, so count it out. We're not doing the microwave. I'm doing that separately because hopefully your guests are not going into your microwave or your ovens. We'll get the front of this done. You want to get the fronts of everything else done and cabinets really quick. So let's go to rack. I know we have granite Right now we're, okay, there she found it. So while she's working on the fronts of the cabinets, she's gonna spray that down and let that work to soften anything up so she can just come right back through there and wipe it all down. When she goes back through here, that's when she'll worry about putting everything away. This area, because it's holding everything, I did not spray down. What's left of the solution on the rag will be enough to clean that area. So, no worries. This is something I need to put away. Notice how she is doing like a figure eight pattern. That helps to keep everything in your rag so you can just take it to the sink and rinse it off. We've had a lot of new employees that I've seen just this area is clean, so I'll show you. Just go like this. Even in a circle, even at restaurants, they think that gets it up, it spreads it around. Take it like that and it collects it all, and it leaves a clean surface behind without any debris. Your washing machine is making noise. <laughs> like that, Amy. I thought somebody was talking. I know, I did too, I'm like, dad's home? <laughs> no, dad, The dishwasher's is talking to us. light him because you always do want to have a candle lit or after baking or something to aromically appeal your gas. Unless you're just trying to get it quick and going to bed, then don't worry about lighting a candle. Who really cares? Oh, flies. Daddy hates them. Chickens. Anything you want to add, Mom? You're the expert here. Nope. That's our compost that we have to take out. We wanted to leave it in here. We would take care of that first. But we've talked about it in previous videos, so we wanted to show you what all we put in there, including the coffee grounds. 
Candace tends to be a little bit more OCD. I'm a little bit. I have she, <laughs> So we're supposed to be going through this quickly, and she she starts going into OCD mode. How am I being OCD? <laughs> this matters. So you can either put your stuff in the sink, or you can put it on the ground, because like I said, we still haven't done floors. The floors is the last thing See? that you do, and that's the reason why. Putting it on the ground is not an OCD person. No, she I'm just tends to be OCD. It. She's doing, she's doing good. I'm controlling it. She is, she is controlling it at the moment. Put this in there. No, no it's clean. Refilled. It's clean, actually. I just didn't put it away. Gatorade. Now, if you have a spot like that, I'm going to tell her right now to grab some bleach out of the pantry. And is we'll... the pantry? Because yeah, it's out we'll, of the laundry room. Quit, um, quit working it and just, it's right there to your, yeah, right there. That's a mess in there, and but you know what? You it. Yeah, you just, oh, 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 put a little bit on there and walk away from it and let it work. Oh, okay, walk working. away. It's already working. Okay. It's so light. It's when you got things like that, you just. And bleach is good for everything. Yeah. Not clothes though. Yeah, she's bleached some of her clothes before. These are the figs. Mom's letting these grapes, zoom in right here with your fingers. Mom's letting these grapes turn into raisins. So that is why it looks like we have bad grapes on our counter. I'm gonna put, push this in. I'm not gonna do it here because there is bleach on my rag until everyone's dead. Especially cleaning in other people's houses. You don't want to mess up your stuff. And if you're into um, natural cleaners, that's great for you. We um, do not have never have tried a few times. How many times? I don't even know. Mom. Oh, I've tried a lot of natural cleaners. And when you're doing basic cleaning, natural cleaners are great. But when I get into my some of the places that I clean where you're just dealing with some really bad stuff. Um, I mean, even here, I mean, call me being OCD, but I like bleach. Yeah, bleach is great. It just, it's a great disinfectant and it whitens. And if you have, in your bathrooms, if you have uh, caulking that um, has some black in it from water, getting inside the caulking you just put that bleach on there let that sit and it'll lighten it up after a few times it might actually take it out but it usually lightens it but it doesn't always take it all the way away um, if it's that bad then you end up usually having to strip out the caulking and do a full re-caulking on your showers or wherever it is that you're looking for okay see well, I can't see, but I know the bleach is still in there. So I haven't rinsed it out yet. And the solution of the granite is still in there. So this should make our granites actually very shiny. What's the timer off? Over there on the eggs. Okay, we are going to- While I rinse this out. Because again, you don't want to do those chairs unless you rinse this out. We are at 28.36. Okay, we're gonna pause this. Not yet, I still gotta do those chairs. No, we're gonna do the chairs with the Swiffer because we are trying to get done quickly. Oh, and now yes. we are she's down right, to she's right, she's right. 30 minutes. So, All right, so we just swaps. we're just gonna hurry up and we're gonna do this real quick. I'm still doing this. Oh, you can just switch me spots. I know what I'm doing here. Okay. Just... So right now. Okay, the chairs are done. We are 27.50. All right, you guys. Now we're to the messy part here. This drink is good. Okay. So 
not going to worry about inside of here. Your guests are not going to look inside of there. Well, they will see a little bit. But, you know. Okay, here we go. In this drawer, I keep a razor blade. You can run your razor blade on your counters. You just don't want to dig. And that's going to help you save time on scrubbing anything that may have been stuck. You're going to wipe off the fronts of your cabinets. You're going to wipe off the fronts of your appliances. If I have time before my company comes, I'm going to hit all of that with glass cleaner. If I don't, I won't. At least I know that it's clean and there's not going to be fingerprints or anything all over all of that. Now we got the front of the stove to deal with. When you're doing stuff, you're using both hands. So you lift and move your stuff at the same time. I got way too much stuff back here. I don't know how many salt and pepper shakers you need between one stove. When you have Tom Atkinson as your husband, there's no, the, the answer, wait, what is it? What is it from Mean Girls? The something does not exist. The <laughs> limit does not exist. Okay, Took here's your razor again, you guys. You use it on your stove. And you want to do the sink last because you're going to be throwing everything in there if you don't, well, if you're not me and just throw it on the floor. You don't want to do this on a dry stove. I always get my surface wet first and then I go over it with the razor blade. It's not going to hurt it. You don't want to gouge again. You want it like sitting nice and straight edge. And it's going to take off all of the big pieces of residue. There is no hiding anything in here today. This is just like this is the way it is for a lot of people. We just, we're busy and we just don't always have time. Sometimes when you get home at night, all you can do is make dinner and you're just too exhausted by the time you're done with dinner to clean everything up. Well, that was silly. You always want to check this. Throw this away. on this so you can wipe it down and as you can tell she's not going behind everything and moving this and picking that up as we would if we were doing a normal clean and getting the house clean on a normal basis we would move everything and get under it I am a big proponent of doing that and she says that and then I start doing it <laughs> It's hard for you not to do those things, but if you're in a hurry, you really got to pick and choose what is important. And to me, I wouldn't want people to see the full coffee pot. The coffee pot, I don't mind, but the dust around it, I would. Yeah. And I mean, that's a daily thing when you're going in and out of your house all the time and dealing with stuff. Now, if I had time, my guests aren't going to be here for a while and I still have a little bit of time left. I would use this. This is a non-abrasive cooktop cleaner. Put it on here, take a paper towel and you would use it like you would a cleanser and then you wipe it off and then you shine up your stove after that. It works great. But for now, this is what it's going to be until we know what our time is. Okay, 
Okay, so we've got the stove done. Now we're gonna look over here. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's fingerprints. Okay, so oh, let's get those real quick. We're just gonna wipe it off. Okay, then you look at your doors. Okay, there's fingerprints on my doors. There's some marks. Let's get those. Okay, on your refrigerator. Get behind, do your handles in case anybody decides they want to open up the refrigerator to get a drink. They're not feeling debris. Now, if anybody wants to open up the refrigerator to get a drink, should you clean this area? Yep. On a quick clean. All you have to do is run that rag right over that area, get any crumbs. There you go. Pull out your deli drawer, wipe that down. A lot of people I see on when they're doing their videos, their refrigerators look so clean and tidy and I'm like, not mine. So there's stuff in there that people want, but it's not tidy, that's for sure. The shelves are clean. I wipe them down, but it's not tidy. You get leftovers in there throughout the week and this life. I don't apologize for for things not being organized because things just can't always be organized. You're busy. Guess what? We have one counter left that we're going to just partially touch because we have 20 minutes left. It's full. And it's where I have my seeds. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just looking to get any kind of dust or debris that's on anything. Of course you want to put your cleaning products away. Yeah, that has to be put back. And when you're doing a quick clean like this, if you're still embarrassed about your home, just apologize for the mess. You didn't do a full cleaning. Then you shouldn't have to apologize for anything. So my theory, don't sweat the small stuff. My okay, theory is guys. apologize. <laughs> yeah, I don't apologize. We are pausing. We are down to 1942. Time for floors. So we have a bathroom that we still have to get done. Now, mind you, we were going to be doing this for an hour, but Candace had already gotten that living space done. So we took 15 minutes off of our time. So we are down to 20 minutes because we set our timer for 45 minutes instead of for an hour. We're going to hit that bathroom and then we are going to do the floors. We're going to see how much time we have left, see if we have time to run a glass cleaner over our appliances to see uh, to make them shine. Okay, guys. So this was the soaker that we actually used for cleaning. We are going to, this is what we mean by the double soaker method. This thing, amazing. I still prefer the Hero for Sharps and just the Dyson for floors, but my mom swears by using these even as a broom. So excuse me, the timer is not on right now because I'm just no, explaining. No, because we're showing you what we do. And the reason that I like it so much is it gets everywhere where your utensils and stuff can't reach. And it extends up and extends down and you can get under all of your cracks and crevices of your tables and your china hutches and the little cracks like in between that cabinet and the china hutch. That little crack right there, that gets in there no problem. So that's why I really, I love it, but you do have to do like the circle eight pattern when you're doing it because you have to keep the stuff inside the Swiffer. So she's gonna get started doing that. And we're just we're doing double suffering. We're not doing the actual floors because we still love that bathroom. So, so here we go. We're at 1940. Let's see how long this takes. Shorten it if you don't have much room. Go all the way around first and pull everything out. Shake it. Light it up. 
slightly. Now, if you were trying to do that with a, a mop or something, you would be tearing up your stuff. Here, we're gonna turn it sideways. Get in there. Sometimes if you get it in too deep of a crack, <laughs> you lose your swiffer. That's always fun. See, look, sunflower. Because even if you don't notice this, somebody might look on your floor and be like, Oh, they don't get underneath or you can eggs. see you can see dust in those types of spaces okay now we just have to do the refrigerator and we will be done with the double silver jeez well and we have to go around stuff in the pantry just very i'm just gonna let her do that because if we're out. okay we're back the double Swiffer just broke. So when something like that happens, you have to improvise. So Candace now is using the regular Swiffer and just getting around all of the edges. And then we will take the vacuum and just... Or a broom. Or a broom. I don't like so much using a broom because it tends to fling stuff up in the air. That's another reason why I use the double. So she got around all of that. And mind you, I did not stop the time before we were trying to figure out the Swiffer. The Swiffer. So we're gonna take off about 30 to 45 seconds, just as you would in football, and then we are gonna resume after that. All right, you guys. Just me clean. Yep, we're doing 45 seconds of just mom cleaning. Very quick clean on the guest bathroom. And I will start it at 12 in about 30 seconds. What do you start with, Mom? I always start with the sinks, and then I move over to, if there was a shower or a tub, I would get all of that done. And then I check my doors, my door frames, my light fixtures, my towel bars, watch for any fingerprints. I'm getting the back of the door right now. I'm looking at my baseboards. They look okay. Not going to worry about that. Nine, and then eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The last thing that you do in a to in a bathroom is your toilet, because once that rag hits that toilet, it's done. It's done. You don't use it on anything else. I use it on the base around the toilet, but that's it. So I always start from the top of my toilet and work my way down, leaving. Now mind you, I'm doing a quick clean. If I was doing a deeper clean, then um, I'd be taking more time getting into cracks and crevices and everything else. But right now, I'm thinking, okay, if anybody lifts up this lid, I don't want them to see A, B, C, D. And you could also use that image right there. It works wonders. It really does. Um, hey, Dad. I have the pads for it. Um, you get in here, get up around your rim. And you want to get in that hole. Right here. Okay. And then I personally don't like a ring in my toilet because to me that still looks like it's dirty. I use a pumice stone. To clean that up. In Arizona we have hard water 
even and we, we have even have a water softener and we still get hard water so you use this around there but I'm not going to get too in depth with that today because that's not our goal for the day but I still want it to be shiny okay so then we're done with that. Then I take my rag and I go around this whole outer edge around your toilet. Because when you're mopping, you can't get back there with your mop. And you're not going to get it clean. So there you go. Flush that toilet. That's done. And then I usually have a rag bag with me. But I don't. So I'm going to use one of my microfibers, but I usually carry blue rags with me. But microfibers work too. I use Spray Away. It doesn't have ammonia in it, so it doesn't leave that cloudy film that you can sometimes get. Bathroom's done. All right, time stopped. Okay, you guys, we're down to the wire. We are at 13 minutes left before our company is going to be here. So another thing that I use is a Norwex. Since that Swiffer broke on us, I'm going to be using this. It comes with different pads. And right now I have the dry pad on there. And it works great. I'm going to show you exactly what it picks up. So let's start the timer and see how we do. All right. That's already clean. And it's already done that area. Again, use your circle eight pattern. or some music. music and just go with the flow of the music and have fun. Don't stress out about it too much. You know, you don't want to be all stressed out when your company gets there. And the neat thing about these Norwex pads are you can feel the magnetic uh, fabric on them. They kind of have this pull when you go to shake things off, you can kind of feel it stick into the floor. And I know Candace is going to have a hard time keeping up with me here because I'm all over the place. So excuse the camera if it's kind of going different, different places here. Now for a quick clean, are we going to worry about vacuuming this rod? No, not if it doesn't look bad. Um, I would take it outside really quick, give it a quick shake, and then not worry about it. I wouldn't worry about grabbing the vacuum to do that. If I had done that, I would have done that when I was vacuuming the living room, and I was already running that vacuum, I would have caught that bug at the same time. Why you gotta judge me in my process? <laughs> no judgment. But, you know, we will be turning the vacuum on to pick up this pile. And if you have little helpers, hmm. put them to work. They can do little things to help you out. Forever her personal assistant. Yeah, always. <laughs> okay, here we go on that. Now check that out. Look at all the hair that that collected. Now I'm going to vacuum it off.
You should hit that rug while you have the vacuum right there. Efficient. Eight minutes and 40 seconds. I just stopped it. Are you going right to mopping? Go right to mopping. All right, resume. Okay, you guys, we went right back to it. This is called an O-Cedar mop. It's a spin mop. It's, it's microfiber, microfiber. And it's amazing. Now remember, we are just trying to make everything Aesthetically pleasing, so we're not going to get crazy on our floors. In a deeper, regular clean, we would go over it again with the steam mop just to sanitize it completely before our Thomason, my nephew, and mom's grandson comes over. The but right are now, very important though, even though we are on a time crunch, because like I said, if you got your grandkids or your kids or your family's kids or anything like that coming over, you don't want them on a dirty floor. No. But our floor gets dirty on the daily from coming in and out the back and Scarlet, mostly. Mostly Scarlet. Because she's just, she's amazing, but she's a bull mastiff. So there's always a lot of dribbles. I always say normally go with the green. So if your tile is going this way, you should be mopping this way. The way I'm mopping right now is not the way that I would say to do it on a normal basis. But I thought that only mattered with that. wood. And it mostly matters with wood because that shows the wood would actually show you going in the opposite direction. I'm not sure what she's doing back there. Use your light to look at your floor to make sure you got all the spots. Okay, here's that mop. You dip it in your water, you put it in the spinner. There's a pedal right here. And you push down on that pedal a few times, take it out, shake it, ready to go. And usually if the water is that color, you will want to change your bucket. But again, this is not a full clean. this one more time and we should be into the hallway here. And more behind you. Now, in our 45 minutes, we are not going to be able to get to the drop-off center in the Monica room. So, this to is line. to the our drop, yeah. So, this is just the main living area where everybody will probably be generalized. When you're doing this 
bucket. You're always going to want to mop wherever you had it sitting because it does leave a little ring on the floor. So you don't want to leave it sitting on wood or anything like that. If you do, always just, the safe thing is just to have a rag or some kind of towel underneath of it. Okay. What's our time? Bathroom. Oh, I forgot my bathroom. Now I'm walking on my floor. Naughty, naughty. Like I said, we already went around that toilet, so we didn't have to worry about that. That's already been clean. Okay, now what's our time? Um, Dad. You just left the timer in the other room. I did. Uh, hold on. Okay, here, Candace. All right, we are at almost three minutes. Okay, there you go, you guys. We've got three minutes to spare. To put away the cleaning supplies. To put supplies. away the cleaning supplies and do any kind of pickup that's still left, like my buffet table, I would still need to pick that up <laughs> and pick up any shoes or whatever that's out here. So there you go. Uh, uh, Swift clean in 45, 45 minutes, minutes or less. Or less. <laughs> Have a great day, you guys. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, I know we had already closed this video, but we forgot to give you the update on the table. So I did put that oil on it and I let that sit. It hadn't totally taken it off, so I scrubbed it a little bit more and it lightened it. It does need a couple more applications. Uh, before all of it will go away. I mean, I, I did damage it with water, so it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I want to tell you, you know, we all have really busy lives, so um, the sun is shining in that window. We all have busy lives, so just give yourself grace. Do what you can and don't sweat the small stuff because you only have so much time in a day to get so much done. So just do what you can and then don't worry about it. So I hope you all have a very good week and we'll see you next week.